past couple of weeks I've been having a really good play with the UDO Super 6 along with a vintage Roland Jupiter 6 and the reason for that is that on the face of it there are an awful lot of similarities. The Jupiter 6 has got a bit of a fan club because it's got a lot of things or a few things at least that the Jupiter 8 doesn't have and that Super 6 has those as well or most of them and I'll go through all the sort of differences in a minute. So I thought if you've got Jupiter 6 Lust, you've been looking at one, and you know there's one for sale at the minute for 4,700 in the in the UK. There's another for 11,000 pound in the UK. The Super 6 is 2,200. So could it fulfil? Could it could it fulfil the role of a Jupiter 6 if if you really wanted that Jupiter style sound, or at least that sort of functionality that you don't get on most synths? So you know, looking at the face of it. They look very, very similar. We've got the Roland style sliders on the Super 6. We've also got these patch buttons, which are very sort of reminiscent actually of the Junos, except for the Junos don't have lights, but these do have lights. We've even not got an LED on this, displaying patch numbers even. Got nothing on the Jupiter 6 either. So you can sort of see that there are similarities, but if we look a little bit deeper even and start looking at the interface, on the Jupiter 6, we've got an LFO with four waveforms and a delay. On the Super 6, four waveforms and a delay on the LFO. Moving along, we've got the VCO mod on the Jupiter 6, and we've got the DDS mod on the Super 6. There's a lot of Super 6 and Jupiter 6 is being said in this, and it's getting quite difficult to, to keep my teeth in. So uh, we've got an LFO or the envelope for DDS1 or DDS2. We've got the same on the Jupiter 6, LFO or envelope 1 as modulation sources for um, VCO1 or VCO2 or both. You've got the both switch on this as well. Then we move over to pulse width modulation and we've got the pulse width and a separate modulation slider and we can access that with the envelope or the LFO and exactly the same over here except for again you've got the little addition of being able to access both at the same time. And then we've got cross mod, we've got cross mod, then we've got DDS1, VCO1, we've got sync, we've got sync, VCO2, DDS2, a mixer between VCO1 and VCO2. Again, it's a blend between VCO1 and VCO2. Then we move over to the VCF, and we've got the frequency and resonance sliders. Frequency and resonance sliders, we've got access to the envelope, or we can modulate via the envelope, the LFO and the keyboard. We've got the envelope, the LFO, and we've got keyboard tracking on this switch. VCA, envelope level or LFO, envelope level or LFO. Again, there's extra bits on the, on the Super 6. Then we move over to the Envelopes, we've got two envelopes on the Jupiter 6. We've got inverse polarity on envelope one and we've got key follow on them both. We've got two envelopes on the Super 6. We've got key tracking for envelope one on there and also we've got the negative envelope as well as a looping function. So on the top deck, as it were, we've got a lot of similarities and moving down to where the key bed is, we've also got these performance sections that again are quite similar. We've got access to individual access to the VCO or the VCF amount of modulation again we've got that over here in fact that's the bend on this one that's for the bend on the on the jupiter 6 then we've got vco or vcf on an lfo2 so a separate lfo vcf or the dds and then we've got the rate and an lfo delay we've got the rate and an lfo delay as well and these lfos only start modulating when you trigger them it's exactly the same on the super 6 then we've got an arpeggiator, arpeggiator, we've got a bit of portmento, portmento, uh, and then we've got the, the bank and the numbers, so we've got the bank and the numbers on this as well. We've also got this interesting poly 1 and poly 2 mode here, that we've got on both of them. Poly 1 lets the envelope run from one note to the next, like you'd expect. As poly 2, the last note cuts off the envelope, the release, to the previous note. Same on this, poly one. Poly two. That allows you to do chords with nice long release times without them sort of merging into each other. So 
So really useful actually that, and you don't get that on many synths. Very, very similar, aren't they? You can see the Super 6 has been inspired by some of the performance aspects of the Jupiter 6. So what are the differences though? Because they're not identical, and I'm not gonna be able to make all the sounds I can make on a Jupiter 6 on the Super 6, but are those important? Are the differences important enough to think, no, I'm gonna spend the extra few thousand pound on a Jupiter 6. So the main differences are when we come to the VCO, we've got an envelope one slider on the Jupiter 6, although on the Super 6 we can access that easily enough using the modulation matrix, and I've done it there that quickly. <laughs> Change the modulation amount. So now I'm effectively doing the same as I am there. But then we come over to the actual waveforms, and on the Jupiter 6 we can stack them. So we can stack any combination of those three. But we can't have the square and the pulse for obvious reasons, but every other combination works. On the Super 6, however, we can only access them discreetly via this switching knob. And although we've got the digital waveforms on this as well, I say the digital, they're all digital, but the PPG style ones, we could sample a single cycle, I suppose, of the Jupiter 6 on various combinations and put them into this, but it wouldn't really work with PWM because you can't, you know, you've got an infinite number or, or at least 127 different variations on each of the combinations. So that's quite a big difference, but it's quite subtle, I suppose, in some sounds and you could maybe live without it. Then we move to the sync, and what's really interesting with the sync on this, I've just had both lit there. I've never had both lit before. I don't know how both would work. But we can sync VCO1 with VCO2, and we can sync VCO2 with VCO1. On the Super 6, just like pretty much any other synth with sync, you can only sync VCO2 to VCO1. So you've only got the sort of the one way round, as it were. Then moving over to VCO2, we've got um, an additional low range, we've got the additional low range here, so it's effectively LFO3 on both synths, but again, VCO2 on the Jupiter 6 can have combinations of the different waveforms, which gives you more complex low rate modulation with the cross mod, which you don't get on, on the Super 6. Super 6 has got a sub oscillator and various crossfade modes, but that's not what this is about. Mixer is a mixer, but what's important there is we don't have independent levels. We can't turn them both down, for example. Then moving over to the VCF, the Jupiter 6 has got a low pass, a high pass, and a band pass. The Super 6 has got a low pass analog filter, 24 dB, and it does have a high pass and band pass mode, but they're not quite the same. The high pass mode just has a gradual drop off under 500 hertz to get rid of a bit of mud. And when you track the high pass, you sort of get a band pass, but it's not quite as, um, as effective or as steep a curve as you get on the Jupiter 6. And I'll demo this in a second. And you've only got the option of on, off, or half for keyboard tracking on the Super 6, whereas on the Jupiter, you've got sort of continuous from naught to 10. And then moving over to the VCA, we've got that covered on the Super 6. Then envelopes, we've got these sliders for the key follow on both of the envelopes, whereas on the Super 6, we've just got Again, a bit like the key track on the, on the filter, we've only got half or on or off. So that sounds like an awful lot of differences, but it's not actually once you start programming sounds. Another one from a performance perspective is that the Jupiter 6 has by timbrality, so you can play one patch with your left and one patch with your right hand. I think the lower one is MIDI channel one, the upper is MIDI channel two. And if you play via MIDI, you can access the whole keyboard by each of the MIDI channels, so the patches can be spread across the keyboard. On the Super 6, you've only got a single tone at a time. Although you've got this sort of mixer section there where you can blend between oscillator one and oscillator two. It's definitely not by timbrel like the Jupiter 6 is. But if we come down to the actual performance sort of section on the bottom left, we've got a wide mode on the bender and that modulates your VCO by a few octaves. We don't have the same thing on the Super 6. The one thing this is obviously lacking is an extra octave on the keyboard. It's a hands-on synth, it's a synth player's synth. I don't miss having an extra octave because I don't often play with two hands. First thing I learned when I started playing in bands when I was a teenager was not to play any bass because it muddies up the mix, especially on stage with a rubbish PA, 
bass player's there to play the bass notes. So I'm a one-handed guy, no matter what I'm doing. One's normally doing something, and the other's tweaking something else. So four octaves is fine for me. Saves a bit of space, but people that like to play the full octaves, the, the full 61 keys, may be disappointed that this hasn't got the extra one. And I think people that were harping after a Jupiter 6 may well also be longing for a five octave keyboard as well. So uh, we've heard what it can and can't do, but we haven't actually heard it yet, have we? So let's, uh, let's jump in then and start playing through some of the sounds. Starting off with a simple sawtooth. Now there are big differences there, and the main one being that the Super 6 is stereo, and it's playing in this binaural mode, which means we're getting a different synth in the left and the right, so you may get a bit more of a, a phasey stereo image. You might have, it might sound a bit richer or fuller. So what I'll do is I'll listen to it in mono, record it in mono, and play it back in mono, and see if that makes any difference, but it should do, because we'll only be listening to one side of the synth. Okay, I've physically taken out the right output from the Super 6, so we're definitely only listening to one side. I'm not merging them somehow in the, in the interface or in logic. It's all definitely just a single signal, single mono signal. And what you notice straight away is that the Jupiter 6 is a little bit brighter, and that actually came as a bit of a, a, bit of a surprise to me, actually. The Jupiter 6 is topping out there at about 19k. With the Super 6 a little bit lower, maybe about 15. And although the Super 6 sounds not as bright, I think it sounds a little bit deeper and richer, especially at the low end. Or is that just because the Jupiter 6 has got that bit more buzz, a bit more bite to it? It's hard to tell. If we just play through the different waveforms, maybe, we've got a sign on the Super 6 that we don't have on the Jupiter 6. So let's go to the, to the triangle. Let's go to the pulse. And on DDS1, so oscillator 1, on the Super 6, we can only get a square. A lot, lot buzzier that square, isn't it? It's really those low notes on the Jupiter 6 that pull out that bite. As we go higher up the keyboard, not that much difference. You can hear a little hum in there, and I don't know if that's because it needs a service. And there's a tiny one in there as well. I've got it turned up really loud in here, by the way. I can modulate the pulse width on the Super 6 on DDS2, so let's do that. Just trying to get it to its finest point, as buzzy as I can. So yeah, there are distinct differences in the tone there. And as I say, you can't do that on oscillator one. On the Jupiter 6, you can do it on both. Interestingly, on the Jupiter 6, we can hear VCO2 when it's in low frequency mode, so you can get tones like this. What we're listening to there, if I knock everything else down, we're listening to oscillator two, so you can do stuff like this.
probably do stuff on the Super 6 using the LFO to do that, but yeah, be listening to one of the other oscillators as well. So you can listen to LFO 1 as an oscillator, but you've got to blend it in with one of these two at the same time. You can't change the mix, it's 50-50, so I don't think you could do this. So yeah, just another thing that the Jupiter 6 seems to do that the Super 6 can't. And the Super 6 isn't trying to be the Jupiter 6, it's just an interesting little experiment, this. So let's now try modulating the oscillator with the LFO, just to see the differences in the modulation range and the modulation speeds we get. So that's unipolar, isn't it? Let's try it over here. LFO, whack it up, put it onto a square. Whoa, so straight away we're getting a lot more modulation, aren't we? And it's bipolar. It's never going to sound the same because one's unipolar and one's bipolar. You can hear on the Jupiter 6, we're going from the central point um, lower and then higher, whereas on this we're bouncing from the central point up and back to the central point again. So the bass note's always the same. And we can hear there that the higher note's getting higher and the lower note's getting lower. So again, it's not looking very hopeful <laughs> to replace the, the Jupiter 6 with a new O6, is it? But these are sort of crazy modulations. If you're relying on your synth to do crazy modulations like that, well, absolutely, um, the Super 6 isn't acting in the same way. But these are taking things to the extreme. The speed of the LFO, the rate. No idea what that is. Let's try it over here. Now, the LFO sounds quicker on the Jupiter 6 than it does on the Super 6, but the Super 6 has got the high frequency mode. So the lowest on the high frequency mode. Is around there, so actually there's quite a lot of crossover. So about 7 tenths up on the rate is zero on this on high frequency mode. So you can get all the frequencies you can get on the Jupiter 6, but you can't get uh, the same type of modulation, unless there's a setting in here that changes it to bipolar, but I've not found one. Uh, maybe they could do that on an update if they really wanted to. But let's take a look at the envelope depth. So I've nearly matched them there, but the reason you can't match them exactly is because the Jupiter 6 goes so much wider. So the highest the Super 6 will go is this, using envelope 2 on VCO2. Lots, lots more modulation again on the Jupiter 6. So, okay, let's move over to the cross mod then. And the cross mod on this Jupiter 6 doesn't seem to be acting like it should. It doesn't surprise me that people got in touch with me to say it sounded wrong, because when I was demoing this, it just sounded pretty useless and awful to be honest and actually I can match them up really well but only for a few keys it's sort of the tracking or something's out on the cross mod or on this vintage one but we can get a nice indication of what it should be doing actually so let's put it back onto a just a sawtooth and we're going to modulate that with oscillator 2 let's change that a bit shall we Put it onto a square. Ah, now that's one thing we can't do. We can't actually put this one onto a square to, to modulate it because it works as a triangle only. And I'll just show that quickly. If we modulate this one, for example, we're listening only to oscillator one there, but we can hear the different waveforms changing the cross modulation on this one. We're not changing the modulation at all by changing the wave shape 
um, DDS2 is actually on, which I think it sounds to me now after playing with it a little bit longer, it sounds like it's just a triangle. And the reason I think that is because when I put this on a triangle, I can match them up almost identically. So let's try that. So they sound very similar, so I'm convinced this uses a triangle now. So I'm getting really, really similar tones out of these. Although slightly out of tune, I keep on having to tune this one. So I'm getting them really close actually. Add a little bit more modulation maybe. I think that's as close as you'd get to Jupiter 6s to be honest. Slightly different overall tone in them. And the levels are changing all over the place. But overall, that's not bad, is it? Let's try and change that into a pad of some sort, or at least a, a longer note. So again, it's slightly drifting on the Jupiter, but you know, I'm quite impressed how well the Super 6 is sticking that close, actually. Super 6 is so much more controllable though, and that's because I think this one's just old. Uh, and I can sort of see now why people have, were a bit disappointed in how I demo the Jupiter 6, because I couldn't get these sort of tones out of it, and you can, you can see why now. It just doesn't quite stay in tune. So that sort of tone should be the same up and down the keyboard. As on this, I suspect I'm going to hear something completely different now. Anyway, let's try something else with it. Of 
course, once we change the wave shapes on VCO2, and just listening to oscillator one, on this, we just can't do that. So limited, but they do sound similar when you're on the triangle. <laughs> We've also got this cross mod envelope on the Jupiter 6. So you can automate the sort of build Use an envelope one, so. And as I said earlier, you can do that on this. You just access modulation envelope one to the mod, and then change the amount. There you go, envelope one is now modulating the cross mod. So we can do it on the Super 6, any tones that you like doing that with, you can do here as well. Okay, so let's take a little look at sync then and just sync in oscillator two with oscillator one. And the Super 6. So you can get them very close there as well. But when a matching sound, it's actually quite difficult to, to work out where the envelope should be because on the Super 6, you've got a lot of play, really fine control below 50%. And above 50% is where you don't need as fine a control, I suppose. There's a lot more, um, there's a lot more modulation. So on the Jupiter 6 here, the delay's on just under 50%. On this, it's way over 50%. <laughs> And actually, it's longer on the Jupiter 6. It's a bit more like it. But as I said before, you can't have the sync going both ways on the Super 6. But syncing oscillator 1 to oscillator 2, when you're modulating oscillator 1 with oscillator 2, gives you a load of different tones as well. So there's loads of raspy stuff in there because you can do that. Do love a bit of a uh, bit of madness. Now, the Jupiter 6 I've got in front of me doesn't self oscillate, and I think it might have been modded to do that. The guy I got it from, Tez, he says that, uh, you know, he's never done any mods to it, but apparently back in the 80s, it was so self um, resonant or went into self oscillation so easily that lots of people modded it, so it didn't do it. Wasn't a big thing, Acid House, back in, uh, back in 1983. So this doesn't go into self oscillation, and I'll just show you that. Put it on VCO2, put it onto a pulse width, put the pulse width on zero. You can sort of hear, if you listen carefully, trying to do something. It's a little bit like the wasp, that. But we're not getting self-oscillation, so I can't show you it doing that. If we go back to VCO1. <laughs> When we bring in the resonance on the Jupiter 6, we lose loads of bass. And I think there are mods you can do to it as well. So they've got very similar characters up to a point, and the point is <laughs> once we knock the resonance a lot higher. And that bass.
bass is something else, isn't it? Bit of old school step in as well, though. Let's have a listen to the um, high pass and the band pass. And all it does here is knock out anything under 500 hertz gradually, so it doesn't just completely cut it off. Do that over here. Nice. Some nasty grit in there, isn't there? Nasty good though. It's actually got quite a lot of resonance, it feels, in the high pass mode. No, it's about the same amount. But that's really nice that it's really good cutting high pass. Let's try the band pass. Again, that's really nice. This has got a sort of band pass on it because the high pass tracks the, uh, the low pass. It's lovely that actually, it's really nice and gentle, but it isn't the Jupiter 6, is it? So generally you can get similar sort of tones from it and low pass mode. It's 24 dB filter. It does have a bit of a roll and feel this one, but it's a little bit gentler um, in the band pass and the high pass, but then we've got modulation on here as well and again with this the modulation isn't quite as much as you get on the Jupiter 6. I shall show you that quickly. Frequency on zero, resonance turned up quite high so we can hear it and envelope modulation is on full. So it's modulating the cutoff here up to about three and a half thousand, four thousand hertz. So when you're doing sounds like this, you're not getting quite the peak, quite the sort of little bite that you get on the Jupiter. I shall show you with this. Let's do the same thing. Sounds really nice, that doesn't it? And that's it coming in at about three and a half, four thousand hertz. But you'll notice the envelope amount here is only on about seventy percent. If I take that up to 100%, it comes in flying in from God knows what frequency. As you can imagine, back in the early 80s when everyone's trying to sound like a DX7, that uh, the resonance being so high and punchy and then being able to modulate it so loud and blisteringly loud, <laughs> I'd imagine you blew a few speakers. So we can see why the mod will have been made. But this means when you do stuff like this, 
Really bitey and you can't quite get that amount of modulation from this. We'll try it. Straight away. Want to push that knob a lot higher. Bringing the frequency up. You're not getting that drop quite so low. Really punchy that. Just can't get that bite. It's interesting that because I really, really like that sound on the Jupiter 6. I wonder if they could increase the modulation amount on this, perhaps. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, no one here is because the Jupiter 6 at doing that. And another thing I've found the Jupiter 6 absolutely excels at is when I've got it in cross mod, is then adding some unison. So. Mad sort of ravey trance sort of stuff, isn't it? A little bit of portamento, maybe. <laughs> really harsh sounding. And that's, I think, why people think it sounds a bit weedy, because that sounds a bit harsh and thin. Big and gritty at the same time. So big, harsh, thin and gritty. <laughs> if that's possible, but I think it is. I think we've just heard it. You have difficulty doing stuff like this on the Super 6. We've got the binaural mode which is a sort of, um, which spreads the oscillators, but it doesn't spread it in the same way as the detune does on the Jupiter 6. If I take it out of unison mode, so solo mode, same sound as this, pretty much. Okay, so we're in the binaural mode. We'll put the Super DDS on. Don't forget, I'm still only coming out from one output, so instead of having seven oscillators playing, or six reflections of the first one, we're only getting three, so there's only four in total. Not bad. Pretty good that actually, isn't it? Not quite the same though. But on the similar scale and the unison modes, just to show you on this, going to shift, got different unison modes. So this is, I think it's less oscillators. I think it's only three out of the six. Could go more detuned. Not quite the same, not quite as harsh, is it? We do have a drift on this, or a slop, and I did think that maybe it could use a slop to detune the oscillators, but it does it more of a drift than a, than a unison detune. I'll just show you that, maybe. Initial patch. Still in shift mode, so this is now slop. You can hear it's going nastily out of tune there, quite nicely.
but it's not the same as a unison detune. If we just pull this down a little, put it into a unison mode. We're in unison mode with six voices. Bring the shift in. Here it's drifting in and out of tune there with Oops, let's take that off. Put DDS mode on. Get that pop at the start. It's not the same as a big D tune. I'll try just doing a big D tune on this. Go into. <laughs> Sounds like a rave horn, doesn't it? And I'm not sure why. Uh, it's because we're in D tune. So just a single sawtooth, then add unison mode. And play an chord in unison mode. So that split that unison now from being one note playing six uh, voices to each note playing three. And now each note playing two. This can't emulate that in any way. So although the Super 6 has got a sort of super ways of doing a detune, it can't do it in exactly the same way as the Jupiter 6. And just quickly out of interest to show you, we can use all these different voice assign modes while we're using the ARP on the Super 6, and we can't do that on the Jupiter 6. over here once we move into unison mode we come out of the arpeggiator okay what else should we look at should we take a look at the modulation section on the bottom left starting with portamento they've both got polyphonic portamento let's chuck it on Try that up here. Is it on? No, would help. We've also got this glissando mode on the Jupiter 6, which plays a portamento, but plays it semitone at a time. Quite nice for you sort of Super Mario Brothers. Haven't got that mode on the Super 6, I'm not surprised really. Not sure what you do with it, but maybe it's your favorite mode on the Jupiter 6, I don't know. But let's take a look at the, um, at the, at the pitch bend and the modulation wheel, shall we? So on the right here, we've got um, the oscillator or the VCF. So if we go to the oscillator, oscillator one. We're getting a maximum of an octave there. On the Jupiter 6, we're getting a little bit more. It's about that, isn't it? 12, 13, 14, 15 tones, semitones, I mean. But we've also got this wide mode. Whoa! How high has that taken us? Just over three octaves. So that's quite a performance thing. Let's try and put a bit of sync on. Uh, let's chuck uh, that range up there. So loads of nice stuff again on the Jupiter 6 that you can't do on the Super 6. I'm beginning to wonder why I decided to do this now, because I'm just finding things all over the place that the Super 6 can't do. And I do like the Super 6. 
Um, <laughs> uh, particularly like the way you can get these really nice lush pads from it. So watch my review on this to see all that. But yeah, I, I was expecting it to be a lot closer. I'm trying to think if there's anything else really. I've missed anything really obvious and I don't think so. So yeah, all in all, I do think it can sound like the Jupiter 6. And I've got a few sounds coming up that I made last night. But if you're a Jupiter 6 aficionado, you will be sorely disappointed if you've got the Super 6 as a replacement. If you've got a Jupiter 6 and you're thinking of selling it to replace it with this, as Tez is, mm, if you use those functions, absolutely not. If you don't use those functions and all the mad cross-modulation um, and these sort of massive range on the bender and stuff like that, well, actually, um, the Super 6 can sound quite like it and as I said there's some some sounds coming up so if you enjoyed that please think about subscribing and ringing that bell and maybe join me over on my Patreon page it all helps to support the channel and I'll see you next time.